guys, it's July 2nd now. We have had some great openers on our books, but today we're going to talk about a really special deal I mentioned in my last video. We're going to talk about the Sakai setup for your gear selection. So stay tuned and we'll dive right into this for you. So like I said guys, we're covering our setup today for Sockeye here in the upper Columbia River. And uh, we just finished a video on some of my top rigs for these fish. So if you want to see that video on the specific rigs, click up right here. Um, we'll go right in now to the terminal end of this. Because there's so much involved, there's a lot of stuff out there, but let me tell you guys, I have found some stuff over the years that just flat out is my favorite. I love to use it. So I want to pass that along to you. Again, this is my opinion, so it's not the end all. There's a lot of great stuff out there, but I have confidence in all this stuff. So if you guys want to get started and set up for this Brewster and Upper Columbia River system fishery for sockeye, it's an absolute blast. There's usually a ton of fish, so it's a lot of fun to take your friends, your family, whoever you may want to go. So we'll take a look then here right into the meat and potatoes of this. Starting with our rods. Now you want something that has uh, a good length because most of the time you're either fishing a dropper setup or you're fishing a, on a downrigger. And personally for me, I have found the downrigger is easier just because you don't have a whole lot of stuff to mess with. But the dropper system honestly has given me a little bit more uh, confidence over the years too because you can easily hook a fish, land it, and get the lines back out with having to pull a downrigger up and reclip and everything. So it's all preference, but you want something rod-wise that can do both. Now some of those rods you may do for downriggers might be a little too stiff or not uh, enough backbone to be able to really give you an opportunity to run droppers as well. Well, the, like I said, one of the things I have confidence in is this rod setup. This is a Velocity 902 Medium Salmon Extreme Series. It's a 9 foot 6 to 15. This rod is by far, as you've seen in so many of my videos, my all around go to. If I'm fishing in the sound, I run this one. If I'm fishing in the rivers, I run this one. This thing has so much versatility, and I really found that because that is the case, you only need one rod to do all this. It can handle droppers up to eight ounces. It can handle a lot of different things. You'd be surprised most other rods can't. So again, this is a Velocity Salmon Extreme series here, and this is the nine foot medium light. So very, very good. I will put everything in the description below on exactly what I'm showing you here. The next piece, I'm running it paired up with a Velocity Recon Reel. And I have this spooled up with 15 pound Iser line. Now you guys can run braid if you really want to. I like having a little bit of shock absorption here with the 15 pound. Now again, what you may end up coming into is if you're fishing this upper Columbia, it's not just sockeye. You may run into a 40 pound king. So 15 pound test, a lot of the times, may be a little undergun. So I say 15 pound because this is what I run on most of my stuff. But however, if you want to run braid, bumping this up to like 40 pound braid, and you're pretty much golden there. So preference, but I currently have 15 pound spool on here because I was targeting my fish the last time with that in the rivers. So at least 15 pound but you can bump that up. But this Recon holds a lot of line, balance is really, really nice on this Velocity rod, and really super simple next in the piece to set up. So once you have your rod and you have your reel with your good line, like I said, you're either gonna run a downrigger setup or you're gonna run a dropper. And I'll cover droppers in another section video, but today we're just gonna go over the terminal end of this. So once you have your rod and reel picked out, then you're gonna to want to have a dodger that really will work well. So we covered the rigs, like I said in the other video, that link will be in the description below. But when you start picking out your dodgers, you want something that gives off a lot of flash and a really good 
kick to side to side motion because these fish will come up to the flash thinking, oh, something's there and it grabs their attention and then they're going to see that rig behind it darting back and forth with that little piece of shrimp and you're going to get them. So I run a few different ones and I have come across a couple in the recent years that really work well for me. Uh, again, these are not the end all, but I have had a lot of success. So the first is a Goals Custom. This is a nine inch, almost teardrop style, 50-50 silver bubble on one side and gold bubble on the other. It really creates a lot of flash. And what I like about these two is you can bend that back section and make a nice cup. So at a trolling a slower speed, you can really get that action. At a faster speed, you don't have to have as much bend, but you can really get some good action with this. And again, this is a Goals Custom. You can reach out to James and he'll hook you up on that end. Um, the other ones that I found to be really successful are, this one is a Gold Star. And it's just your silver with the prism tape on it. Now what I've done in another video I'll put up here and in the link description below is customizing your Dodgers. You can see here I have the silver and then I took a piece of moon jelly oval tape. So this really has a prism effect but really flashes off. You can see how much flashes there. So this is a very successful, more your standard kind of sockeye flasher there. I apologize. Dodger. These are all Dodgers, um, but your standard oval really works well. Then in the last, I don't know, it's been five or six years, they came out with, from Max, has the Double D. They had a Kokanee small version, and they have this big guy. And the big one here is really nice because you can use these little holes up top via the diagram on the back you can see there to push this gear off the side of the boat. So if you are fishing downriggers, you can run the side rods out just a little further and keeps your gear separated. These work really well and again I have a video showing how to do this little customization with the, the tape there. But here is an early morning one with the silver and the glow. Really helps fish to focus and key in on something that's a little different than everybody else is running. But that's then all you need. So you got your really good rod set up, you picked out your dodgers, you went back through and looked at the video and have some kind of terminal tackle in for rigs that you want to use, you have confidence in. Next you're going to pick your bait. And bait on the Columbia River can be a variety of assortments. Sockeye loves shrimp. And that's just the fact. A lot of guys will run coon shrimp. A lot of guys will run, um, if you can find them up there, sand shrimp. You can even run just store-bought prawns. Um, so I will do another video separating that into getting bait set up for sockeye fishing. And I will cure some stuff up for you guys and showcase how it all works. But having some kind of scent there for bait really makes a difference. I know AN Sporty makes those scent sticks that I love, and so you can put some extra scent on the Dodger itself here on the bottom, a little bit on the back, and then even run it down the line so those fish have something else to key in on. The scent of the bait is always great, but you also can mask your own on the Dodger and the rest of the gear to really increase your chances. But really, that's just the basic setup you guys need and you will be out there catching fish and having a blast. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this. I cannot wait to get up there. The fishing is good. And so I hope to see you guys up there and out on the water. Take care and fish on.